does bow our heads. Precious Heavenly Father, our God, we give thanks at this time as we come to you. During this hour, we pray your blessings are flow to us. We pray that our coming together, centering on your will, your heart, your love, is an opportunity for us to receive the gift of your word, that it may be open to us, that our minds may be as new wineskins to receive deep understanding of it. So we offer this time period in devotion, worship, and also in study as we prepare ourselves to receive the word. Please speak to the hearts and minds of each of your children as we appear virtually, yet we are here. We are here in unity with you and with one another, seeking a greater understanding of that, our faithful walk. We're grateful and thankful as we lift these words, preciously offer them up, put them on our altar. We offer it in the precious name of Christ our Lord. Amen and Adju. Amen. Adieu. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I pray uh, one more time. The, this is uh, because he lives. Uh, maybe one, two verses, and uh, sing together and uh, prepare for the uh, today's our restoration. Here we go. God sent his son They call him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died To buy my pardon An empty grave is there to prove My Savior Special um, speaker, uh, Reverend uh, Justin uh, Okamoto. Uh, he is our son uh, from the <laughs> Mr. Mrs. Okamoto, myself and my wife. Uh, so uh, uh, he has been uh, <laughs> he has been pastoring uh, in the West uh, Westchester, uh, you know, Rockland area, and. Uh, we call the Berberia uh, family community. And uh, so uh, uh, he, he just came back from Japan and his uh, life is now the, in a, a new uh, direction. And his ministry, he chose his ministry, and yeah, God chose him uh, to minister in America. He, uh, he has been in Japan for four years and now his family, all family is moving here. So uh, today uh, I want to welcome Justin, and uh, uh, he's gonna uh, present the, this topic, the spirit, no, overcoming, right? Overcoming the spirit. Amen, the spirit of mammon. Of mammon. Okay, Justin, uh, take, take us away. Can you guys hear me all right? Yes, yes. Yes. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I, I have a presentation to go along with this. Um, but yeah, today I was uh, you know, asked to speak about this topic, overcoming the spirit of mammon. Um, I think in today's world, it's not a very popular topic 
to speak about. And uh, I'll, just to be honest, it's not a topic that I've actually ever spoken on before. So <laughs> this is a new experience and new opportunity for me as well. Um, not just to share about it, but you know, every time we're asked to speak on something, you know, we are also given the task to then reflect on it deeper in our own lives and in, go look into the scriptures and to see uh, what does God have to say um, about the topic. So, um, you know, I appreciate Reverend Gabriel for choosing the topic this month um, and, yeah, giving me this opportunity to kind of uh, stretch my understanding of, of God and of scripture. Um, and, you know, I want to share uh, my understanding. Of course, all of us, you know, we have our own um, experiences in life. And, and so, you know, I also want to share, um, you know, based on my own experience of life. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know what mammon is, because uh, I actually didn't know the word mammon, because I heard the translation of uh, money before, uh, you know, so, in some translations, they, 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 say, say, they just say money, but um, mammon is basically, it means wealth or money or material things. Um, so uh, we're really talking about how do we overcome this, the temptation of material things. Um, and if we look at the world that we live in right now, um, there's temptation everywhere, right? Um, we're hit basically every minute with uh, new advertising and new new messages from uh from the world about how, new ways how to how to make more money how to get more stuff um i don't know about you but uh anytime i'm on the internet if i use facebook or youtube oh without a doubt i will always get an advertisement that's showing me some kind of successful person um that found some way new way to make money uh, to make what they call might call passive income, or the, you know the secret formula to make make more money, right? Uh, using YouTube or using uh, this system or that system, and you know why do we see so many uh, advertisements like this everywhere we go? Well, simple truth is it's because that they they work. Um, if these advertisements didn't work, then the people who make the advertisements wouldn't have the ability to afford to put the money, to, to put the advertisements out, right? So these advertisements, they're everywhere because they, they, they work for the people who are putting them out there to make more money. Um, and it's because there's a lot of people um, who, you know, around, especially young people these days that believe that uh, making money and accumulating uh, wealth and material things is their top priority in life. And so that's why we see that this is so popular. Um, we also see another sign of uh, you know just how uh, how powerful material material things has uh, a grasp on people today. Uh, when we look at you know what people are studying, a lot of people are studying features um, uh, that will allow them to make more money, like engineering or computer science. Uh, of course, some people are genuinely interested in these subjects, but a lot of people are studying things based on what's going to allow them to make the most money, um, rather than you know what's really going to fulfill them and what's really going to bring uh, bring joy to themselves and to others. Um, of course, some people are genuinely interested in these things, but I would say that there's a lot of people who go into these things because they're looking to make as much money as possible. Um, and then finally, you know, we see in the news. A lot of talk about money, you know, uh, the world's richest people. Um, we see America's women billionaires. Um, you know, there a lot about the economy, the stock market, jobs market around the nation. People are always talking about, um, you know, uh, the the economics of the nation. When we talk about politics, um, you know, there's these two people. I don't know if you know these these people, uh, Elon Musk and uh, Jeff Bezos. They're the two richest people in the world, and you know, each of them are about worth about 160 billion dollars. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't even know what that even means. 160 billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do you do with that much money? It's it's um it's an incredible amount of money that you, basically you can never really spend that much money in a lifetime. 
Um, but what is the basic message that the media, that the world that we're living in is trying to send to our, especially to our young people these days, right? Because that's really where a lot of these advertisements are going. It's going into the, the minds of, of young people who are, who are always on social media, who are always on the internet and getting hit by these advertisements over and over again. The basic message is that the way to be happy in life, the way to be successful in life is to make more money than those around you. Um, but there's a problem with this message. Do you know what the problem is with this message? Problem is, it's a lie. It's not true, right? Um, if, we, if we really take a look at um, the reality, you know, does, does money, does, um, does wealth bring us happiness? Then there's many examples that will say, the opposite to this message, right? Um, for example, who knows this uh, this one guy uh, here, Robin Williams, right? He's uh, a very successful, very uh, well well liked, and um, you know had thousands and, and millions of fans all around the world for his, his the work that he did in in movies and comedy and um, in the, you know entertainment, um, and you know he had he had everything that anybody would really need physically. He, he had uh, lots of money. Um, he had a family. Um, but if you know who he is, then you also probably know that he had a tragic ending um, in 2014 where he took his own life. Um, he committed suicide you know, because he, he was not satisfied. He was not happy in his life. Um, and then we have this other couple who's been in the uh, news quite a lot these days. This is, um, you know, Bill Gates and uh, Melinda Gates. Been married for 27 years. Um, Bill Gates used to be the richest person in all of the world, actually. Um, but after 27 years, very recently, they decided to divorce. Uh, now it's starting to become known that, you know, Bill Gates had um, affairs outside of marriage, outside of the marriage. Um, and, you know, even though you could say these people had everything, you know, physically, materially, they had everything that they could have wanted and more, more than enough, um, but they still were not satisfied. And they're still looking, looking outside of, you know, into the world to find satisfaction to their, their dissatisfaction, to their unhappiness. And so we're, we're starting to see evidence all around the world. And it's becoming so clear about the truth that the Bible's, that what the Bible's talking about, um, in in uh, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, six and seven it says uh, people work and work to feed themselves, but they are never satisfied. And this is the reality: is that people work and work until basically they can no longer work for the sake of feeding themselves, feeding their family, you know, having enough materially. But but in the reality, they're never satisfied. Um, and when we look at this world, it's very easy to see. Uh, that this is not the world that God's desire, that God desires. This is, in many ways, Satan's world. And everywhere around us, we're told the lie that by working hard and making enough money, we can find some sense of happiness. However, the truth is happiness can only be found with God. Um, now, I'm not saying that uh, money is wrong or inherently evil. Um, after all, we have to understand what, what is money. Uh, money is something that we use to make it easier for us to exchange goods, food, services, products. You know, it's just, it's just a piece of paper that we pass around so that we can easily, more easily trade. You know, before we had these pieces of paper, we would just trade a cow for, uh, you know, a cow for two sheep, you know, maybe a sheep for, uh, you know, a bunch of lumber or something. And that was kind of tough. So we have this money, this paper, so that we can just exchange goods. So money is really just a symbol. It's a representation of creation, you could say. It's a representation um, of all the things that God created. Um, so then we have to understand, you know, what was God's original intention for all of the things of creation? You know, this, this will really help us understand uh, the proper relationship that we're supposed to have with with money, with you know all things, um, and we can find that answer in Genesis, where it says, 
uh, in uh, first Genesis 1, uh, verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So through this verse, we can really understand uh, God's plan for humanity through these great, uh, these three blessings that God gave to, um, to Adam, uh, Adam and Eve. And the third one is to have dominion over basically to have dominion over all things of the earth, to have dominion over the creation. So originally human beings were supposed to be the ones who could dominate over all things. Um, and to dominate the creation means to be responsible for it. It means to be able to use the creation to create more beauty in the world, to create goodness in the world. Uh, it means that we're the ones that are supposed to be in the driver's seat. So not, not creation. Creation is not the one in the driver's seat. We are supposed to be the ones in the driver's seat. Um, it even says in the Bible that we are supposed to even judge the angels, right? So even, even to the level of angels, we human beings are supposed to be able to dominate um, the angels. So um, you can take, kind of look at the relationship, you know, man and creation. And really, originally, man was supposed to be the one in this subject position, the, the, the position to dominate creation. Um, and how did man do, do that? And how, how do we continue to do that? Um, it says in Genesis uh, 2 verse 20, uh, it talks about how Adam was naming everything in the creation, right? In, in the Garden of Eden, he was giving names to everything. Um, and that's one way that we practice dominion over creation is by naming things, actually. Uh, kind of like when we have a, a pet, you know, what do we do? We, we give it a name. When we give it a name, it kind of makes it ours, right? Uh, we become the owner, the steward of that animal. And uh, we actually do this, right, when we, when we invent things, when we put things together. Um, you know, the first person who created a chair, they, they put some pieces of wood together and then they called it a chair, right? Thomas Edison, he put some glass and some metal together and he called it a light bulb, right? Um, uh, you know, more in the recent future, we, who, who gave the, this, you know, this thing, the name iPhone, you know, the one, the one who created this, you know, Stephen Jobs, you know, he, he gave it this name, an iPhone. So this is one way that we have dominion over things is we, we name it, it becomes, uh, we become the owner of it. Um, but the reality is, for most people, the relationship between creation and man is, is opposite. You know, we become dominated by things. Um, and the way we can understand this, even in our own lives, is think about how many times we compromise on our principles and values based off of how much we have, um, how much, uh, you know, we may know that in the Bible, it says to love our neighbor, you know, it talks about giving generously to the poor, um, and we might believe that it is good, in fact, to give and to offer. You know, that's our conscience telling us what to do. However, when we look at our bank accounts or we look in our wallet and we notice that there's a little less than last month or not as much as we'd like there to be, we go against our conscience and instead allow the circumstances of how much things that we have, the creation, to dictate our behavior. And we change our behavior based on how much we have versus living by certain principles and certain values that God has taught us. Um, and this is one of the things that, uh, you know, our, the, the founder of ACLC, Reverend Moon, has, has talked about this and, and shared about the history of his family. Uh, and this is one of the things that I really uh, am inspired by, you know, the stories of how he grew up and how he had this amazing tradition um, I just want to read this from his, this is from his autobiography. He says, by the time I was born and was growing up, much of the wealth that was that my great grandfather had accumulated was gone. And our family had just enough to get by. The family tradition of feeding others was still alive, however, and we would feed others even if it meant there wouldn't be enough to feed our family members. The first thing I learned after I learned to walk was how to serve food to others. 
During the Japanese occupation, many Koreans had their homes and lands con land confiscated as they escaped the country to Manchuria, where they hoped to build new lives for themselves. They would pass by our home on the main road that led to Sunchan in North Pyongan province. My mother would always prepare food for the passerby who came from all parts of Korea. If a beggar came to our home asking for food and my mother did not react quickly enough, my grandfather would pick up his meal and take it to the beggar. Perhaps because I was born into such a family, I too have spent much of my life feeding people. To me, giving people food is the most precious work. When I am eating and I see someone who has nothing to eat, it pains my heart and I cannot continue eating. Um, so really for, uh, for uh, Reverend Moon and his family, it really didn't matter how much they had, um, you know, whatever they had, they, they did not allow that to dictate whether or not they were going to give or not. Um, they always stuck by that principle to give, uh, to give first. Um, so how do we then go from the state that um, we're in now, uh, this state where creation is really dominating us to the original state that we want to be in, you know, where um, we are able to dominate creation. Um, yeah, th th to, to understand this, um, I want to go into this parable uh, the parable of the prodigal son. And, uh, you know, this parable is not often used for this, um, this kind of understanding. I think this parable is, is mostly used to understand, right, redemption of, um, you know, whether that, whether or not we're righteous or, or not righteous, you know, God's um, unconditional love uh, for all, all, all humanity um, and his desire for all of us to come back. But actually, when I thought about it, um, I realized there's a lot that we can understand also about um, our relationship to creation um, and how we can go back to that original relationship. So I'm just going to read it. It says, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, um, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still long, a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has uh, him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you killed the fattened calf for him. 
My son, the father said, you're always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Um, so again, usually this parable is used to talk about um, God's love for the righteous and the unrighteous. Um, however, um, when we look at it in this aspect of overcoming uh, the spirit of mammon, uh, in the story, we can see that the younger son asks for his inheritance, right? And the father agrees. Uh, the attitude that the younger son had was this attitude of, we could say, justified taking, uh, trying to get something for himself that he felt was rightfully his. Um, and that is a lot what we do as well. When we receive something, we don't have this experience of gratitude um, because we have this attitude of, uh, of taking. Um, and, you know, this, this sense that I, I deserved this. You know, I got this because this is rightfully mine. Um, and so we are justified in being, in, in receiving, and we lose that sense of gratitude. Um, it becomes something that is not worth being grateful for because we were supposed to receive it anyway. Um, then after getting what he wants, he goes and he spends it on wasteful things, things that only provide a temporary pleasure, right? And that's, that's the same. You know, when we, when we don't have gratitude for what we have, we tend to waste it. We tend to just let it go and spend it, um, use it for things that are um, only temporary. Um, but, you know, he finally does decide to go back um, and he has this heart of repentance and his father embraces him and gives him a celebration. And what we can learn from this is that God always wants to bless us. God wants to bless us spiritually, but also physically and, and materially. Um, you know, that's why it says, you know, we were meant to have dominion over all things. We were meant to be the lords of all of the creation. Uh, the reason why this is important to know is that most people, you know, work so hard to hang on to what they've got or try to accumulate so many things uh, because they're trying to fill some, some kind of hole, some kind of void. You know, they don't have faith that God will take care of them. So out of fear, they will have out of fear that they'll have nothing um and ultimately a lot of a lot of people you know they feel if they have nothing then then they aren't anything they'll be nothing um you know unless they're making um the acquiring of physical things a top priority in life uh so you know most of the sin that people commit from my understanding is done out of out of fear fear of you know, not being enough, not being loved, not having enough. And when we fear that we don't have enough, we, we, we start to feel compelled to try to take and try to get. Um, however, if we can understand that God loves us unconditionally, just as this father who loves his prodigal son, um, if we really trust that God will always take care of us, then we can stop acting on this fear and we can start acting on faith. Um, <clears throat> And not only will that make us more fulfilled in life, but will, it will also actually allow us to be more financially successful. It'll allow God to bless us in incredible ways. Um, so I know this is not an easy thing to do. Uh, it does take a lot of honest self-awareness to overcome uh, the spirit of mammon, to overcome this temptation to make uh, the, the acquiring of things of physical things um you know make, stop not not having that be a priority it's not easy uh we have to look into ourselves and and ask ourselves you know honestly when do when do i allow the fear of losing money or the desire for money control my actions and go against my beliefs go against the values that god has instilled upon me like generosity like giving uh like giving first like living for the sake of others um, you know, I know, I know for myself, this was something, this was a, a struggle when it came to, um, tithing, actually. Um, I struggled for a long time to tithe, <laughs> this is confession, um, because I, you know, in my mind, I, I was, 
um, I was already, you know, doing a lot for the church. I was volunteering and I was thinking, you know, I, I already give so much, you know, at least I, I can hang on to, you know, <laughs> this small paycheck that I get. Um, but, you know, when we start to compromise like this, uh, we start to slowly, slowly disconnect from our conscience and disconnect from God's voice. Um, and so, you know, it came to a point where I had to make the decision and I had to be honest and, and confess, you know, to God that like, there's no, there's no, um, there's no justification for what I'm doing. What I'm doing, I'm simply going against God's will, going against God's word. And I had to, I had to be honest about that and repent about that. And only then was I able to then make the commitment. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to tithe. I want to, I want to be a giver to the, to the church, to the community, um, not, not a taker, you know, and I, and I want to trust that God will take care of, take care of me, take care of my family. Um, so in conclusion, again, I wanted to say that it's not wrong to have money or to have wealth. Um, in fact, it was God's plan that we have dominion over all things. Um, however, we just have to know that accumulating wealth should not be the center of our lives or our core motivation for our actions. Um, rather, we need to trust God and we need to serve others. And when we do that, you know, we will find that something much more deeper than physical wealth uh, will be given to us. And that is a, an amazing spiritual wealth. So um, that's really what I wanted to share about this topic of overcoming the spirit of mammon. Uh, thank you so much. And God bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> you have to unmute if you want to speak. okay justin sorry justin can you uh, close uh, with a prayer oh okay sure what prayer sure okay is there any prayer our most beloved god we have a parent and our true parents we thank you so much uh, for this uh, this wonderful Sunday, this hour of restoration that um, many of our uh, brothers and sisters are uh, working so hard to, to put together every single week so that we can have a place to come together. Um, and this is a really special gathering. Uh, we come from various different uh, backgrounds, denominations, different races, uh, ethnicities, you know, different nationalities, and all different kinds of people coming together together. Uh, to to worship you, to praise you, um, and to understand the, the words of wisdom, the truth that you've given us. And that's really what allows us to come together. There's no other force other than your love and your truth that will allow different kinds of people, different ways of thinking to come together. It's only through your love, through the power of the Holy Spirit that we're able to come together. Um, but also through the open-mindedness um, and the willingness to um, put on those new wine skins that each person um, here has chosen to uh, come with an open mind and open heart to receive um, your word. Uh, I'm really grateful that I had this chance as someone who's much, much younger than most of the people here. Um, I know there's so much still that I, I can learn, um, so much more experience in life that I can have. Um, but I'm really grateful for everybody uh, just to um, allow me to express what was uh, in my mind and my heart and, and hopefully allow you to speak through uh, through this message today uh, to have some deeper understanding about your your ways of living and, and so that we can also uh, reflect on ourselves uh, because we, we all have a lot, a lot of ways to grow before we can fulfill on the calling to be perfect as as um, as you are Emily. Heavenly Father is perfect and you know, we still have so much ways to go and I just uh, pray that we can commit to taking steps forward and to growing every single day. Uh, so thank you so much and um, I pray in all of our names and in uh, Jesus' name. Amen. And I you pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Justin. You are big hands to Justin. Hey, great message. Thank you very much, Justin. Uh, now I'd like to ask uh, Reverend Gabriel uh, to read us for the uh, 
meditation and prayer and uh, offering uh, our prayer together. Uh, Reverend Gabriel, uh, please lead us for the prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we are going to pray according to Matthew 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The essence of uh, this teaching for this month is to bring to mind the consciousness to always seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness before any other thing, knowing that every other thing, as good as it is for us to have them, they are all vanity. They are all vanity. So we're going to talk to God this morning. Say, Lord God, help me to always seek your kingdom and your righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will talk to God. If God help me, help me, O Lord, to all to always put you first in every situation, in every decision that I'm taking, O Lord. Father, help me to be that woman who doesn't hunger for you or the days of my life. Father, help me to be a woman after your own heart, O Lord. It is possible, like David. A woman who can be a woman of the heart and to really honor the father. It means a woman who lives for you. Lima, a woman who Lord who wait for you, who understand for you from the beginning of your words and do what you heart that you have to do, Lord, without questioning, without murmuring, without complaining, oh Lord. Father, I say thank you for bringing me to this world of maturity, oh Father, in your presence and this level of light, oh Lord. Father, I worship you, I praise you, I thank you so much for giving me, oh Lord, the grace to overcome the spirit of man, to bring it under feet, oh Lord, oh Father, and not let be intimidated by the society, oh Lord, because I'm not making money or I'm not doing the way we are doing it. Gabriel. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 That the acquisition of wealth is not what guarantees a successful man. We saw the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. The man was so rich, he had everything. And he had also opportunity to help the poor and uh, to impart a generation. But he could not because he was taken away by the things of this world. We are going to talk to God once more. God, help me not to miss heaven through the acquisition of wealth on this earth. Help me, O oh Lord, not to miss heaven. Help me, O oh Lord, not to miss heaven. Shall we talk to God? Shall we talk to God once more? Not to miss heaven. Help me not to miss heaven in the pursuit of material oh, things of the world. In the name of Joshua. In the mighty name of Joshua. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord, not to miss heaven. The way you do is for me, O Lord, for my stand in our life, O Lord, to be for us. Shall we seek your kingdom first? And then the seeking of your kingdom first will Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Properly guide our prayers, our fears. Help us to always seek. No will above all else in life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Finally, as God said, God, multiply your grace in my life. Multiply your grace, O oh Lord, in my life to serve you in truth and spirit always. In the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, multiply your grace in my life 
that come in the widows are your Lord. Men of God, let us praise you. Come to us, Lord. 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 Other As I want to round up this section, the Holy Spirit is in my heart that as many as I hear. God wants to bless you through this message. Because God is, is still in the business of blessing. Amen. He said, ask shall be given, speak shall find, knock the door shall be opened unto you. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. Quietly ask God one particular thing you want God to do for you before the expiration of this month. The month of May is going. It's going. Ask God, ask God, talk to God right now. Ask God, what do you want God to do for you? You have had his word. Mm -hmm. So many people are supposed to be on this platform right now, but they're not here. But for you that, I, that is here, God says you should ask. So go ahead and ask. Yes. Why not ask? I heard God speaking right now. Say, tell my people to ask. Ask quietly. You don't need to... Say it out quietly within yourself. They are asking, say, God, do this for me. Do this for me, and I will do this for you. Talk to God. Talk to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ask God. Ask. And he shall be given. Ask God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you because by the ancient of days, you are the I am that I am. Thank you, Lord, for your son that you have used to speak your word unto all this moment. Father, it is hour of restoration. That I need to be restored in our life for us to make heaven. Father, do it for us now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We call the glory because of mighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Gabriel. I, I kind of, I hope that my group doesn't mind that I repeat the same thing. Yeah. I, I gave the story of when Jesus gave out talents. He gave 10 to one person. He gave five to one other person. And he gave one to one person. The person who only had one went and buried it and hid it because he didn't want to lose his one talent. And when Jesus came back, the 10 became 100. And Jesus was very happy and blessed, you know, blessed him. And the guy who had five, had 20, was very happy with him. And then with the guy with one talent, Jesus actually took it away from him because he didn't do anything with his one talent. And he gave it to the people who did things with their talent. So to me, that's, that's an important point is that having money, having things, is not wrong. In other words, mama itself is not wrong. It's what we do with what we have. So that's an important thing. And mam and mammon, it don't worship manum, but use manum so that God's word can be preached, can be spread to the world. Amen. That's it. That's yeah. It. Okay. Uh, anybody? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, Margaret, Margaret, is she there? Uh, Margaret. Now, uh, Mar Mar Reverend Margaret, would you like to share with us? 
You need to unmute uh, yourself. Can you unmute yourself? <laughs> we all have this problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. I I was really blessed uh, with the message because like uh, when I came on board, I remember I said that uh, this is a message that have guided my life mm -hmm. right from the time I gave my life to Jesus. Yes, I remember that. Because I, I came out from a wealthy family Welcome. and uh, my mother was wealthy and uh, and also, she was in the other side. She was in her court. So I was supposed to take, take her throne, whatever, when she's gone. But Christ, God called me out of that mess. Wow. And by the time I became God's own, it was not a battle between the two powers. And God had me. And the message that God told, gave to me was lay your treasures mm -hmm. in heaven where moats and ants does not enter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anytime I'm going through hardship, like of recent, something just happened in my workplace. And I started quoting, I said, the gifts of God make it rich and added no sorrow. So I wouldn't be fret about no money, no food, no this, no that. Uh -uh. So that's one thing I gained from the message today said, because we don't trust God yeah. enough for our supplies, we want to have, 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 get, get. So I really thank God for Justin, Pastor Justin. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And when you break trust, when you lose trust of what God can do in your life, then you are finished because fear will take over you. And the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Mm -hmm. So when there is no faith, there is fear. And anything we do in fear, God is not glorified. So may the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you very Thank much. You. That's a, what a blessing to have you. and hear Thank you, you sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. We are really thankful uh, for the message tonight. It brings value to what we are doing, which is the purpose of us meeting every, every time that we educate our soul, we learn more so that we can adjust our life accordingly. Yeah. We are really thankful for what we, we have received today. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Justin has blessed us abundantly. Okay. All we need to do is go through notes and learn more because that is the way we really receive the most of whatever we learn. One time is not enough. True. So, Father, we really thank you tonight, O oh Lord, for bringing us together and feeding our souls. Father, let your name be glorified. Amen. It is your will, O oh Lord, for your children to have money, to use it, O oh Lord, for your purpose and for your glory. Father, you don't want the enemy to buy our souls because of material things, because we are in the class of God, you created us in your class, in the class of God. We cannot go down to lower level. Lord, help us understand who we are. Help us stand in your values and in your principles, no matter what is going around us. Let your Holy Spirit guide us all the time, oh Lord, because by ourselves in this world, it is impossible. But with your spirit, with your presence in us, we are more than conqueror. And we can overcome everything that comes our way. Father, I release, we release ourselves into your hands. 
As we leave this platform, O oh Lord, we are not leaving your presence. Go with us wherever we go this week. Let your light shine on our path. And let, O oh Lord, let, O oh Father, the name our Lord, of our Lord Jesus be not only seen in us, but be written in our actions wherever we go. In the name of Jesus, you have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.